yesterday we, we came out and impacted this pile. This is the, the magnitude pile. And we uh, got that test in and the rain kind of made us run away. And so we're going to be testing this. This has no grout in it. It's just it's the same steel pile but without grout, correct? Okay. So what you're looking at here is our, our Apple 6 drop hammer with a 9,000 pound drop weight. That's the red apple thing inside. All comes from Newton's apple falling and hitting someone. F equals MA, all that good stuff. Now under here we have our instrumentation. We've got strain gauges here and accelerometers. And we're taking four measurements of strain and two of acceleration. Um, on the back side of the pile, I've also just got a scale taped on there and a sight level that's trained on that. So that's how we take our final set measurement. Um, so the system itself, as you can see, there's a red bar. It's going from the top of the ram here up through the top of the leads, and that's what's connected to the, the uh, second line of the crane. So we'll pick it up to our desired height. We've got a hydraulic jack at the top that will pressurize, and then the crane will let off and, and slack enough on that line that he doesn't catch the weight when we release that hydraulic jack, and then the weight's in free fall. So on the pile itself, you can see here, we have this uh, kind of steel plate that's just welded to the top of the pile. It's kind of just an impact plate, and that's what we're using for a cushion. It used to be that thick, now it's a little bit less. Kind of mush that down a little bit. But they get, that kind of distributes the load to the pile during the impact and, and extends the impact time. Steel to steel would be such a rapid impact that we might have problems measuring uh, acceleration under that. So I think uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with a small drop. That does a few things. First of all, you can see if, if the frame wants to shift one way or the other, make sure everything's on center. It's also checking our instrumentation, making sure everything's tight, everything's functioning properly, because you only have a few shots at getting data. So I think uh, we'll probably go from just a one foot drop this first time, and you'll all be very unimpressed with the, uh, <laughs> the response. It gets a little more fun when you get higher and higher drops. I don't know if we're doing multiple drops now or if we're just going to do one until they're ready. But uh, is there any other questions now that you're out here and you see it and it's not a picture about the setup? I do have the, uh, the pile driving analyzer set up over here so we can, once we get some data, if you want to walk by and look at it, it just looks like squiggly lines. And that assumes a lot of things. That's made for driven piles. So we take this data. It's a non-uniform pile. It's got a connection in it. So all the output on the screen is just made up. <laughs> we have to go through and do some analysis and tell this thing it's a helical pile and this is a grouted pile and we have to make up that pile model. So, but if you want to come by and see what those, those results look like, at least on the screen. So yesterday you saw that the, this, this orange line here is the non-grouted pile that you saw yesterday. We did three drops. This is the drop height on the uh, x-axis and the measured set. So we did three drops, so that's got three data points there. The magnitude pile we hit five times in the end. But as you can see, it's the same drop weight, it's the same cushion thickness, uh, piles are very similar in length. So obviously, obviously if you get more set, under the same energy, you'd expect less capacity, right? And I think everybody expected the magnitude pile to have higher capacity. So that's the first indicator. So the way we do it, and I explained it yesterday, but you were all tired and sleepy from eating, but each impact we do an analysis and we come up with a simulated load set curve and we superimpose those. So if we look at the magnitude pile, the first impact was a short drop, pretty much a straight line out and back, very little settlement. Second impact, a little bit higher load was, was mobilized, we had a little bit more set, and so on. We had a, bit, a jump there from one and a half to two and a half, or three feet. Uh, oh, that's just a two foot drop. And there's a two and a half foot, and then we got really excited and went and had a three and a half foot drop. So you can see we kind of have this kind of curve that looks a lot like a static load test result. And so, that's our simulated load set curve, or what we'd expect to see um, settlement versus, uh, versus applied load. On the non-grouted, we only hit it three times. First time we actually saw some settlement from a, from a small impact, and then a little bit more, and then everyone started cheering, drop it from the top, and so we hit it, we hit it hard, I guess hard, quote unquote, 
And you can see here, while we only measured about 1.4 inches of total displacement, we actually are modeling up to two and a half inches of displacement. Now, the way these are generated is there's basically an elastic portion, and then we tell the program, yeah, we saw uh, 0.75 inches of settlement. So it just says, okay, you got 0.75 inches of elastic deformation at the end. And then it comes back and, and the final set is what we programmed in. So, okay, there's the curve. So if we compare the two, we get fairly similar shapes, a little bit uh, pretty steep slope on the, uh, the, the magnitude. It's a pretty stiff foundation with the grout and obviously significantly higher uh, capacity on that, on that uh, magnitude pile. <clears throat> And I put a line here. I think I did this at 1.3 inches. I kind of took an average diameter of the helices. There were 12 and 14. So 10% of that, that would be your, your uh, quote unquote capacity. And that puts us about 190 kips for the uh, non-grouted and about 335 kips for the magnitude. So very similar piles. You add the grout and you can significantly get, uh, get a significant more capacity. So if we're talking in allowable loads, the, uh, you take your 335 and I'm converting it to tons now because I've heard a lot of people talk in tons. We always work in kips. But essentially we're looking at an 84 ton allowable for the, uh, the magnitude pile and a, about a 48 ton allowable. 